All right, folks, so we're going to do one more project here before we finish wrapping up the van. So we just got done doing the EGR uh, replacement, but I figured since if you're following along, you'll know that when I was doing the EGR replacement, one of the plastic quick connect fittings that are for the heater hose, it um, broke. So I had to replace that. But I figured since I already had coolant out of the system and I already had the um, heater hose disconnected, it was a good time to install this Glenn hot water shower uh, heat exchanger. Now this is, a heat, this is a heat exchanger. So basically what it does is, is it takes coolant in uh, this end and then it, the coolant comes back out and then goes off to your heater core. And then you can hook uh, cold water uh, or basically fresh water to this end and it goes through and runs through the heat exchanger giving you hot water on the other end. I've, I've had this thing for a while and I've kind of hemmed and hawed whether or not I wanted to install it. I bought it and then because I was really excited about it then I you know basically um, kind of decided I didn't want to do it because I didn't quite honestly I didn't want to mess with the van but now since I already have it apart I figured you know what let's uh, get this thing installed. So I'm going to use this space here for my heat exchanger. This is actually where, a, this is an empty space on my van, but it would be where the battery would be at, like in a diesel van. So on Megan's van, this is where her battery's at. My battery is over here. So we'll use this space here. This should fit in there and I should be able to get the hoses wrapped around and everything. So yeah, we're going to start working on that. In the end, I'm going to have Dirt Road Garage build a bracket down there so that this actually can mount to something. So this is the hose I was going to pull or that I'm pulling out and I'm going to replace with the new hose. I am glad that I'm doing it because as I pulled it out inspecting it, I could see two places where it was getting eaten through and it was about to fail me. So this was a worthwhile, uh, this is definitely a worthwhile thing for me to do because there is a couple of bad spots on this hose and uh, it was only a matter of time before this ended up causing me a problem. All right, so now I've got both uh, hoses connected to the van. This one here is routing up and just underneath the firewall and then down into the engine block. And then this one is routing and connected right into the heater core. The other uh, heater hose that goes back to the engine is still stock that will be untouched. All right, so I'm routing the hoses and I've got the uh, heater core one coming out and it's gonna be a pretty long run that's gonna go around the air intake come back on the inside of the uh, radiator and then connect up with the heat exchanger, which will sit right about here. But on this end here, you can see I've got a little bend and I stole that, I cut it out of the old heater core hose that was bad. That section is still good. I'm gonna put a bend. That bend was gonna be too tight to make with the hose I have coming here. I wouldn't have been able to bend it in. It would have kinked the hose. So with uh, stealing the bend from the other hose, I'll be able to basically connect those up with a straight barb and uh, be able to make that bend. That way, once I have Dirt Road Garage make a bracket, this will actually be able to sit right here and that'll be a great space for it. Good test in the van. I've had it running now for a little over an hour. I don't see any leaks uh, down below, so that's all good. Uh, also, I've checked. You can feel these hoses that I've added, the new ones going into the um, heat exchanger. They're nice and warm, and I don't feel any more air bubbles going through them, so that's good. The heat exchanger itself is also very hot, so that's also good. Uh, so I think that's going to work out well. But uh, yeah, so the next step is is going to be I'm going to get the fan over to Dirt Road Garage, have them build a bracket for that because right now you can see I just have a tie wrapped in place. So we're going to get a bracket on that right away. Then we'll start working on the freshwater hookups. All right. Well, I have decided that as part of this heat exchanger, I do want to add a shower room and have it come off the side of the van. So it'll be like a shower awning. It will pop out, It'll, it will actually attach to the rack and then pop out to the side. So I've come to CBT uh, to pick one up. Hello, Ollie. Hey, Who's this guy? As I said, the next step of my heat exchanger was to come to Dirt Road Garage and have a plate built. So what we're going to do, I just talked to Aaron, 
he's going to build a plate that will come off these two bolts here basically bolt on in here and then go across and give a plate that basically I can bolt in here and here so he's gonna work on that real quick and uh, we get that done then we'll start working figuring out how we're gonna set up fresh water So here's some leftover of all the stuff that Aaron's cut on the plasma table. This almost looks like a piece of art. I feel like the city of Redmond should display this somewhere. Aaron's all done with the bracket. Really simple design, will work well, keeps the bracket nice and secure. This is definitely on the simple side of things that I've had Aaron build for me. If you guys have been following the channel, you know that uh, he also uh, redid my entire track bar, new mount on the axle, new mount over on the frame, custom track bar. The one thing that you guys haven't seen yet that I haven't shown is my new custom uh, radius arms that he built that put in proper caster into the van so it's not quite so squirrely down the road. So anyways, if you guys need anything done, dirt road garage, great place to get something fabricated. All right, folks, well, we're out on a beautiful river here today. We're gonna do some testing of the shower system. As you can see, I've got the CBT uh, shower awning set up. It's on the van. I did have to go to dirt road garage again and have them make some brackets for that because the brackets that came with it didn't work well with my custom awning. But yeah, it's all set up, it's easy to deploy, and then it just folds up right up next to the van, just like the awning does. All right, now for some temporary purposes, I've just got the water hoses uh, coming out the front of the bumper here. This is gonna be a temporary setup. I've actually ordered some PEX pipe off of Amazon, and I'm gonna route it out, uh, down, and then I'm gonna have them come out right there below the shower awning so that everything plugs in right there instead of here. All right, so again, we've got the heat exchanger. It's all mounted up. We've got the bracket from Dirt Road Garage painted and everything is in place. We've got our temporary hoses plugged in. Like I said, I'm gonna get some PEX pipe and route that all underneath the van and make it a little bit nicer uh, in the future. Now, right now you can see we got a hose. It's running down and down into this river. All right, so for the first test that we're gonna do, we're gonna pull water straight out of this river. Now this river, comes right out of the ground about a mile up and it is super cold. According to my little uh, laser tip thermometer here, we're running right about 34.9 degrees. I mean, I tell you what guys, this is the coldest water I have ever put my feet into. It literally uh, gives you an ice cream headache just to even stand in this thing. Um, it is super cold water, 34.9 is frigid 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 so anyways we're going to pump it straight out of the ground using the pump that i got with the jokus shower system and of course i'm powering that with my jackery 300 which jackery is a sponsor of this video and a sponsor of the channel i keep the 300 in the van even though i've got a complete power system in the van having something portable like this that i can easily carry around and use outside the van is super handy so I use the 300 to run the, the pump. I also use the 300 if I want to sit outside the van and edit photos or edit video outside the van. If you're looking for a dual battery replacement for your adventure vehicle, something like the 500, uh, 1000 or 1500, depending on your power needs is going to be what you're going to want to look at there. But uh, yeah, if you guys are looking for a Jackery product, use the link down in the description that I have and it really does help out the channel. All right. With that out of the way, let's, uh, let's do some testing. All right, folks, well, we've got everything set up. I've got the van on and it's up to temperature. So we're gonna do some tests. Now, the first test is I've got 195 degree th uh, thermostat in the van. So I'm just gonna see what kind of temperature I'm getting on the exchanger itself. So the heat exchanger is running at about 165 degrees and that's hitting the laser on the outer um, plastic of the heat exchanger so you know the fact that there's probably going to be some heat loss going through the plastic and everything 
uh, I, I feel like that's pretty on par. So just outside plastic into this heat exchanger is running 165 degrees. All right, so now we're gonna turn the water on. I've got a little valve right here. This is something that I added into the uh, one of the Joka hoses. Uh, so that way I could kind of could shut the water on and off. Now, one thing you should be aware of, because you are gonna have a little bit of water in the heat exchanger when you first turn it on, is when you initially turn it on, you're going to end up getting a burst of very, very extremely hot water. Now you can get a mixer valve that has a therm thermostat in it that can control and mix cold with hot water so that you don't get that. I don't have that on the van right now. And at this point with the test that I've already pre-done, I don't plan to get it. Now that might change down the line. I may change my mind if I do, I'll let you guys know. But as it is right now, um, I've decided that I don't really need it for my application. So I've got one of the bowls here for my dog. I'm just gonna turn this down a little bit so it doesn't splash so much. And we're gonna put some water in here. All right, so we filled up some water. It's really quick to temperature. So it brought it up to 92 degrees. Uh, that's pretty good. I mean, not really as warm as I'd like a shower, but considering that it was started off at I think it was 34.9, um, yeah, bring it up to uh, this temperature is pretty good. So 92 degrees is what it brought it up to. All right, so for the next test is we're gonna use the water that's in this blue jug, and this is just plain tap water. Uh, the jug has been sitting in the sun, direct sun, for about uh, roughly uh, 15 to 20 minutes. According to my laser, we are running at about 77, 78 degrees. So that, that's quite a bit warmer than, than that creek. So let's, uh, let's see how hot the water gets now. So we're gonna try this test again. Uh, I've been letting it run just for a second here to make sure we're past that initial uh, hot water. So I'm just gonna turn it down here just a little bit. Get about an inch of water in the bowl. All right, so let's see what we got. All right, so it says it's running 98 degrees, okay? So that, that brought it up from 75 to 98. All right, so for this last test, what I'm doing is basically is I'm recirculating the water back into the jug. So it's running out of the jug, through the heat exchanger, back into the jug. And my goal here is, is to warm the water in the jug up to about 85 degrees somewhere around in there and then I figure that with as much as that it heats the water that should put me right around hopefully 104 which is what I would consider to be an ideal shower temperature and so I actually got this up to 80 uh, 88 so we're gonna do a little test first I'm just gonna let it go here as you can see it puts out quite a bit of pressure this little pump there's the hot water uh, so if you have a pump that doesn't push out this much water, you're going to have different results because it's going to move slower through the exchanger. But I can feel it now. That feels really good. So we're just going to uh, put some water in our bowl. Okay. All right, so the water in the bowl is 108 degrees. So like I said, I got this up to 88. I meant to get stop it at like 84, 85. So it's at 108 now, so it is really hot. All right, so this is it for us on our look on the Glen heat exchanger. I think this is gonna be great for me and my van. Uh, I like the fact that it's compact, it's under the hood, it's out of the way, it's not something extra I have to stow in my storage area like the Joka system that I had to actually store the hot water heater somewhere. So having this under the hood and out of the way is a great benefit. Now, another upgrade to my shower system is the CVT shower awning. Again, I like the fact that it's integrated into my rack now and I don't have to have something stowed away up in my skybox like I had before with the Joka shower room. This one is smaller, but uh, the integration again makes it more convenient for me. Now, a couple of things that you guys may not like is A, you have to run the van. You have to run your vehicle in order to make the exchanger work. Um, that could be a con for some people. For me, it's not a big deal. It's just another opportunity that while the van is running, that I can also be getting some charge on my in-house battery system. So uh, that's um, not a big deal to me. The other con would be 
that you may have to run more than one pass through the heat exchanger in order to get the water up to the temperature that you want. Now for me again, not a big deal. I ran the shower the other night when I actually took a real shower. And basically by the t I set everything up, got it recirculating. By the time I got the shower running out, got my bath stuff out and got ready to take a shower, the water was ready to go and plenty hot. So it really didn't take any time at all and it wasn't really that big of an inconvenience. Anyways guys, I hope you found something useful. If this is something that you're looking at, this isn't a sponsored video. Other than the, the uh, Jackery, of course, that part is sponsored, but the Glend heat exchanger I purchased myself, and uh, I think it's going to be great for the van. I'm really looking forward to uh, lots of uh, hot showers from it. So if this is something that was helpful to you, please do leave a like. If you have any comments or questions about anything I didn't cover in this video, please leave those down below, and we'll catch you guys again outside.